Okay, hello everybody. Uh, so I will give you an overview of the SEN standard which are under, under development right now uh, today. I will, uh, I will just focus on two aspects. One is uh, about the CE marking which is already applied on the, on the products for several years now but which will be modified soon I hope and I will tell you some news or maybe I should say some no news about the CE marking and the new CE marking on that and I will give you then an overview of uh, the new standards, uh, some standards that are under revision and give you some key aspects of this uh, revision of standards. Uh, before starting this presentation, uh, just to remind you that you will have all this information that I will give you in the presentation in the, presentation in the new technical guidebook that has been uh, um, written by the technical committee of uh, ESO. Okay, um, a very short overview of the same standard which applied to uh, blinds and shutter in Europe. Uh, basically, there are uh, three product standards applying to shutters and blinds. Uh, one, uh, 13659, which is applying to shutters and external venetian blind. Uh, EN 13561, which applies to external blinds and awnings. And EN 13120, which applies to uh, internal blinds. Uh, these three product standards are directly connected to European directives, either the construction product regulation or the machinery directive. Uh, they are supported by a uh, number of standards you see on the screen. Um, one is the terminology standard, uh, I will come back later on this, on this standard. Another one, uh, another group of standards are dealing with specific requirements such as thermal resistance or solar and visual aspects. Uh, there is a set of test method standards which uh, give the measurement and test method applying for different properties such as the wind resistance or snow load, the permeability and so on and so on. And the last group of standards is dealing with drives, so uh, motors basically, uh, which are in integrated in the, in the product. Uh, what about C marking? Uh, so the three product standards uh, so really the, the, the base, the, the most important standards for the industry have been revised recently and published uh, in the last uh, three years. So uh, the 13659 and uh, the 13561 have been revised and published in May 2015 and internal blinds have been, the standard has been published in 2014. They all are connected to uh, European directives and regulations, so they are all are giving a specification to apply the CE marking in Europe. Uh, the two group of standards for external products, shutters, awnings, external blinds, uh, the CE marking applies to uh, both uh, manual and cooperated products, while for internal products, only uh, cooperated products are covered by CE marking. Uh, the goal, the final uh, goal of CE marking for uh, the, the external products is that all these characteristics will be declared. Uh, however, for now, only the wind resistance uh, is, is to be declared by the manufacturers. The two other characteristics which are planned to be integrated in the CE marking for external products, so the solar factor, and the additional thermal resistance, the delta R. Also, these characteristics have been integrated in the revised version of the standard published in 2015. You cannot and you shall not declare them in your declaration of performance. Why? Because these two standards have not been yet cited to the official journal of the European Union. So even if the standards themselves have these characteristics integrated in the document, because this standard has not been, I would say, officially recognized by the European Commission, you shall not declare these characteristics within the, the CE marking. You can do what you want uh, in your technical specification, of course. You can re uh, give the classes and the values regarding these characteristics but they cannot be integrated in the, in, in the CE marking. So this is very important. You will be out of flow otherwise. Coming back to uh, our set of standards, um, 
the red standard here are under revision at the moment. Um, so the terminology standard, I will come back later on that, or the thermal resistance standard, so the standard which is giving the calculation for the, the additional thermal resistance, and the two standards which are dealing with solar and visual properties. Regarding the terminology standard, the goal of this standard is to give uh, the terms and definition in all three official languages in Europe. So this is a basic standard for you to use the, cert the same terms in, in all European countries. So it's not technical at all, but it's very important so that the industry is speaking the same language all over Europe. So the new standard uh, has been voted in November last year, so it will be published very soon. Um, again, it is very important in your technical specification so that the same product is called the same way all over Europe with based on this standard. Um, the next standard which is under revision is about the, uh, the additional thermal resistance. This is the characteristics which, re which represents the additional insulation that is brought by shutters or blinds when they are closed in front of, of a window. Um, you know that any shutter or blind in front of a window will, uh, will increase the uh, insulation capacity of the window. Uh, this characteristic is called delta R. I uh, just gave you the, the, um, the equation of this. So this is the U value of the window and the shutter. This is the U value of the window. And when we have a shutter or a blind closed in front of a window, you may have this delta R value and uh, express how the shutter and blind increase the insulation capacity of the window. We just started the revision of this standard. Is, um, the reason for the revision of this standard is that there are, the first version of the standard has been uh, established maybe 20 years ago. At that time, this characteristic was, was not so important or was not so recognized by the industry. Only the shutter industry was using it. Um, but since then, we had a lot of reports and test results on blinds and different products that uh, show that there is a big gap between the calculation which is given by this standard, which is quite simple and simplified, uh, and measurements that have, done, that have been done in different labs. So the conclusion is that the standard is not anymore in line with what, with the real performance of the product. So uh, our wish is to improve the calculation method of the standard, but to keep a good balance between the accuracy and, uh, and how to say, uh, and, and to do that, the, the, the manufacturers are still able to calculate themselves the, the, the the, the, the delta R. So what we don't want is that uh, for cost reason, of course, uh, we uh, increase the level of accuracy, but we force manufacturers to make a uh, costly test and so on. So we just started this work. It's a big challenge. Uh, it's, a big, it's a big technical challenge so that we keep this good balance between accuracy and the reasonable uh, simplicity of the calculation. Uh, the last set of standards which are under revision uh, are about social and visual properties. I will just give you an overview of what we changed in the classification of the product and Tillman Kuhl will come back later on, on on all the measurements and some technical information. Uh, the first characteristic that will be changed by the new standard is about the darkening properties, so what we use to call blackout products, blackout blind. We changed, we changed the terminology to avoid some problem, there, are, there were some, some troubles in, in Germany uh, using blackout uh, term for products that were not blackout according to the standard. Um, we keep the, sep the same principle for the measurements. The principle is very easy. Uh, you install a, a fabric or cotton material or a complete product and you just illuminate this product with a lamp at certain level of, of lux and a human observer is just watching if some light is passing through the product. So it's very easy and simple to do. Um, what we have improved in this methodology is that we have now a method to qualify the observer and the room. This, is, this room sh uh, must be completely black and of course the observer shall not be blind. So um, we try to uh, 
to, uh, we developed a method to qualify both the test equipment and the observer capacity to see the light passing through the product. Um, but uh, we still consider that the observer is, uh, human observer is still the best uh, option for this, for this test. We may have developed a test with a, 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 a camera or something very specific, but the human eye is very sensitive and there is very few systems that will be able to reproduce this sensibility. Maybe only a photocounter that will be able to do that and this will cost a lot of money to manufacture to do the test. So again, in the, in the, in the test standard, we try to find a good compromise and a good balance between cost and accuracy. I will just present you the, the new classification which is planned for darkening properties. Uh, until now, we, have, we had only test and measurement method for spe specific products. We changed our mind and we consider that any blind or any shutter has a darkening property and then should be classified for this darkening property. Um, the classification is based on two aspects. First, there is a class for the curtain material. So if we take a roller blind, we will have a class for the fabric from 0 to 4, the 4 being the best and the 0 the lowest level. Uh, but what is important in a, in a shading is that the complete product is, is uh, evaluated. So we have added some um, classes for the product itself considering the way it was designed. So whether there is side guides or no side guides, um, um, sometimes for some classes we add an, an additional test with a complete product. And based on these two aspects, one on the curtain and one of the product, we have uh, a complete uh, classification which will apply to the complete system. So really the goal with this matter is, is to force in a way the customer to choose the right class. The, the problem we had in Europe is that people were selling blackout products and the customer was, expe was expecting a complete blackout product. But in fact the, 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 the product was not totally opaque and totally blackout. So now we change our mind and our, our, our goal is really to force customers to say well I want a, a C.3 class for darkening properties for my hotel room for example or for, for my office or if I want if I have a test lab which needs a total opaque system then I want another class and so on. So this is something that will be integrating in the in the new in the new 14501 when it will be published. The next item where we spend a lot of time and Tilman will come back on that also is about glare control. So uh, again a visual aspect. This is something very important for office premises and glare should be something that will be that should be considered in all office premises. So we have developed a new classification of product. I will not go into detail. Uh, the classification is based on the direct direct transmittance and the direct diffuse transmittance, whatever. Uh, what you have to, to keep in mind and to understand is that we have now also considered a new characteristic in the, in the product, which what we call the cutoff angle. This is, how, this is to consider that depending on the angle of incidence from the radiation, um, there is an angle where there is no direct transmittance. And then with these products you can play and you can, you can, um, you can have uh, fabrics, for example, which has, that have a higher uh, um, uh, um, a high openness coefficient, but if, he has, if it has a lower uh, cutoff angle, it could be uh, best performing for glare control. So uh, if a product a manufacturer can justify that the fabric or the system has a cutoff angle less than 65 degrees, he can claim an, an additional class uh, so it will allow these products to have a good openness coefficient to allow a view outside but having still a reasonable good uh, uh, glare control as well. Uh, what we've done also in the standard is to give a recommendation on the glare control class to be used by architects or building designers depending on different parameters. Glare uh, is really uh, related to human being, of, of course. One, hum uh, one person will not behave the same to another one person, but it's also sensitive to, uh, to the building characteristics. 
uh, depending on the location, depending on the orientation and so on. So we have developed, and Tillman and his team has developed uh, tables that uh, allow recommendation on the class of glare control to be used depending on several parameters of the building. It considers the location of the building, the orientation of the building, uh, the transmittance of the glazing, um, the orientation of the, of, the, of the desk compared to the, to the glazed facade, whether you are in front of the, of the facade or you have an angle uh, to the facade. It also considers the, the size of the opening and also the distance of the desk to the facade. And based on that, people will be able to recommend a glare control class for shading to be installed, for example, in office premises. So we hope that these tables will help um, architects and building designers to go a little bit more deeply in the recommendation of, of shading regarding glare control. Just for you to know that what I, I was very quick on in presenting this uh, this uh, evolution of 14501 and 14500. Uh, these standards will be submitted to public inquiry from May to August this year. Uh, after this public inquiry, we will have some uh, meeting to check the comments that have been done during this inquiry, and then the document will be voted. So we cannot expect a publication of this new version of the standard before uh, next year. So now, thank you for your attention. Again, if you have, if you want to know more, you have everything in uh, in this technical guidebook. Thanks a lot for your attention.